Hello and welcome to SourceCAD. In the previous video, we used LiDAR sensor of iPhone to scan 3D space. Now this video is a little different because here you don't need an iPhone with LiDAR sensor. You can simply start scanning objects using phone camera and polycam app. Now this feature is called photo mode and in this video I have explained step by step method of scanning 3D objects and using that scan data to actually 3D print the object as well. So without further delay, let's get started. Alright, so now just click this plus icon to start capturing and here we need to select one of the modes here I'll obviously select photo mode we have lidar as well as photo just select photo mode and now we are ready to capture this so as you can see here my subject is this vintage camera and I will scan this vintage camera using photo mode of polycam now all you've got to do is just place it on a tripod or somewhere stable and then move around this camera and take several photos so once your subject is properly placed, simply start clicking here. So take the first frame and then keep on clicking to take multiple frames. Now, as you can see, I am moving right around this camera and I'm taking several pictures. Now, there is a minimum requirement, which is 20 frames that you actually need for generating a decent quality output. But higher the frame number, better will be the quality. So try to take as many pictures as possible for the best result. Now in this case, I will take several photos just by moving around this. And once I'm done, I will well start processing this. So let me just fast forward this and I'll directly get to the end of this capture. So once you are done capturing this, click on this done button and now you can process it. Now you can select one of the three presets, reduced, medium or full. Reduced will give you the least quality output and full will give you the best output. Of course, better the quality longer will be the processing time. So in this case, I'll select full because I just want the best kind of output possible with this scan. And then we have an option here called object masking. Now you should select this option of object masking only when you are moving your subject. In this case, our subject was camera and we were actually moving around that object. So our subject was completely stationary. So we don't need to select this checkbox. All right, now once you are done, click on upload and process. And now this will upload all the images on Polycam cloud server and the processing will happen on Polycam servers. So nothing is happening locally here. Once the processing is done, the final 3D model will be downloaded again and uh, you can then reprocess it or view it or even export it. So I'll fast forward this and directly get to the end of this processing. So now the processing is done and it is downloading the 3D model from Polycam servers. And here we have the final 3D camera. Now, as you can see, it has a lot of details, textures, lights, and everything is kind of clear, though there are some problem areas which you can fix by taking even more captures, even more pictures of this scan, but we'll do that later. First, let's just crop this. So for cropping this, select this crop option, and now this cuboid will show up. Now you can change the size of this cuboid simply by selecting any of these faces, and you can just move it up, down. You can also select other faces if you want to move it around. In this case, I'll select the bottom face and I'll move it up so that this tripod is removed and we are left only with the camera. So once you are done, click on this crop option and this will crop this scan data. All right, so now let's talk about something different entirely. Now here I'll start scanning using photo mode and I will scan this Buddha bust with a completely uniform background. Now instead of moving around this object here, I'll move the actual object. So I'll just place it with a uniform background so that it separates the subject from the background and it will be easier for Polycam to identify the actual subject just because of this yellow background. So now with that, I have this bust and I'll start taking several frames. 
Now here, instead of moving around the object, as you can see, I am simply rotating this object slightly every time and just take as many frames as you can. Of course, the minimum requirement is 20. So you need to take at least 20 frames, but higher the frame number, better will be the quality. So just make sure everything is covered and here I'm just slowly rotating it. Also, you can rotate this entire model more than once. So once it has completed a 360 revolution, you can keep on rotating and take even more frames just to add more details in this bust. So here I'll directly fast forward this and get to the end of this scan process. So once done, click on this done button and once again, we can process it. So here I will once again, select the full quality preset from this reduced medium and full detail option. And because I just want the best quality output in this case too. And here in object masking, I'll make sure that this checkbox is now selected. So this toggle should be on the right side. It should be active. Now here we moved our object instead of moving around the object. So this object masking should be checked. Now, once you are done, click on upload and process. And once again, it will start uploading this thing on polycam servers. It will process it there and then download the final 3d model. So I'll quickly fast forward this and get to the end of this processing. So now the processing is done and it is downloading this model from polycam servers. So here we are. Now, as you can see, this is a highly detailed model with all the textures and colors, and there is hardly anything that we need to fix here. You can also orbit this model around to check for imperfections, but it looks like it is really good, a kind of a neat model here. So I'll directly export it. So select export option and here I'm selecting STL. Now STL is the best format for 3D printing. So that's what I'm going to select and I'll send it via email. So I'll select email option and I'll just send it on a test email. Now, of course, you can send it via messages or you can directly export it using other options as well. So I'm just using email. Now I'll open this file in my PC. So here we have this file and now I'll just start it in Ultimaker Cura. Now Ultimaker Cura is the slicer which I'm using for 3D printing. And here we are, this is the STL file. Now I'm using Creality CR10 3D printer and for printing this, I'm using PLA as the material. So I'll print it with PLA on Creality CR10. Of course, we need to change the orientation. As you can see with this orientation, it will make a lot of supports. So to get rid of supports, these red areas are actually the supports and overhangs. We don't want that. So I'll just rotate this model to avoid as many supports and overhangs as possible. So let's just select this model and rotate it to an angle of 90 degrees. So using this red triad, I'll just rotate it to an angle of 90 degrees. There we are. Now, if you print this on a scale of one is to one, it's going to take quite some time because this model is big. Uh, but let's maybe check how long it's going to take if we print it in uh, a one is to one scale. So I'll select slice. Okay. As you can see, it's going to take one day and 13 hours approximately. So that's that's kind of big. So let's just decrease the size. So I'll select scale option here and the largest is actually Z axis. So I'll decrease its size. I'll make it 150 maybe. All right. And I think it's still big. So let's make it smaller, maybe 100 mm. All right. Now 100 mm is the height of this bust. So from bottom to top. Now let's slice it and let's see how long it's going to take. So it's going to take approximately five hours to 3D print this. I think this is good. So I'll just use this size and uh, now we are ready to 3D print this. So let's just export this G code. And now I'll directly go to my 3D printer and I'll show you the final result. All right, so without making any changes in the original 3D scan, here is our 3D print. So I've started 3D printing it on CR10. It will take some time to print this, but I just wanted to print this data 
in the raw format so i made no changes at all i directly used ultimaker to uh, slice this to uh, get the g code and here i'm printing it with all the default settings of course if you want to make changes in this model you can do so using other softwares like blender or maybe fusion 360 but in this case i just wanted to give you a glimpse of how you can directly capture any object and print it even without making any modifications we just changed the scale it is now smaller than the actual part but it's exactly the same thing which we scanned so once again let it 3d print and i'll directly show you the end result so here we have it the final 3d model now as you can see this is almost identical to the actual bust and there are a few imperfections like here on the face it's not very smooth which you can actually fix using a 3d modeling software like blender or fusion 360 so you can import this 3d model in any 3d modeling software you can fix it and once again export it in stl format and then 3d print it again so that's how you can very easily convert an actual piece of object into a 3d printed part so now let's scan a completely different object this time so with a uniform background which i used previously and of course with photo mode of polycam app i'm going to scan this headphone now here i have got this headphone on a stand and putting it on stand will actually help you scan it from all the directions so with this kind of setup it will be very easy to scan this headphone now i'll start with the first frame so take the first second and slowly keep rotating this stand as well and in this way just take as many frames as you can so i will take approximately 80 photos for this scan and uh, i'll quickly fast forward this video and directly get to the end of this scan process So finally, we are done scanning this. So click on done. And now here we have the draft mode. Now here before we actually change the settings of this uh, detail and object masking, let's click on any of these images. So as you can see, we have 88 images here. Simply select any one of these images. It will take you to all the image gallery. So now here you can select an image which you think should not be in this list and you can then remove it. For example, I have this one where uh, you can see my hand as well. So I'll simply remove this from this entire setup. So that's just removed and now just move it around and there also I think we have another one with the hand uh, but that's just fine so I'll leave it. So in a similar way you can remove any frame which you think should not be in this scan data also you can click this camera icon to add more frames so select that camera icon and now you can once again start taking some pictures so just take some pictures and you will be then able to add it in your drawing so i'll just take a few pictures once again and once you are done click on done button and now once again it will add all those images in your entire library so once again we now have 91 images now click on this toggle object masking and in the detail full should be checked because we just want the maximum quality output here so with these settings once again select upload and process and this will start uploading it on the polycam servers and processing will start again so once again processing is done and it is downloading the part from polycam servers and here we have it so this is the scanned part now as you can see we have all the textures and details here it's very clean but we just need to remove wires as well as this stand which is obviously not part of this headphone now you can do that using crop tool so just select this crop tool and we have this cuboid now using this cuboid well of course you can crop it so i'll just move the bottom face of this cuboid slightly upwards so that the wire as well as bottom part of this stand is removed and i'll click ok there we are so click crop and it will just remove all the things which are below that selected plane now you can further modify it using a 3d modeling software which i'll do in fusion 360 now here i'll use fusion 360 to clean up the headphone model so i've got the stl file i'll import it in fusion 360 and for that 
I'll go to the data panel. All right, now here I'll upload the file. So select file and the file is well right here. So I'll select it and open. All right, now let's upload this file on Fusion 360 server. All right, so now the file is uploaded. Let's close it and I'll open it from here. So we've got this thing here, double click, and this will open this headphone model right inside the main window. And here we are. Now this one is a part created with mesh. So you simply cannot modify this thing using solid modeling tools and you need to go to this mesh tab to make changes here. Now that I have this mesh, the first thing that I think should be modified here is this stand. We need to just remove this stand from this 3D model. And to do that, I will start with the direct modeling tool. So we don't have that yet. If you go to modify, we don't have any direct editing tool and it will show up once you activate the design history. So I'll right click here and I'll select capture design history. All right, now currently this file is read only so I'll make it editable and now we have the design history here and now we also have this direct edit tool. So select this tool, select the body and just click OK. Now we are in the direct editing environment where we can make changes in this directly. So let's start painting this stand so I'll just select this area and uh, maybe up to this height and here also I'll just select some of these triangles and now we are going to delete them so just select delete and there we are we've got this hole we'll fill it later but that's gone all right now to fill the hole you can go to prepare and select repair option select repair and here you have several options for example you can select rebuild close hole stitch and remove wrap so one of the most logical things in this case is close hole so just select this but this may not give you the best quality result so select close hole click on preview and select this body all right, so this body is selected and now you can see that it actually closed it with some straight facets, which is not quite flattering. So we may need to use something else. So here, instead of selecting close holes, I'll just select maybe rebuild. So this will just rebuild this entire model and here it will use the triangular facets for merging these gaps. Now this gives an impressive kind of result. Now here if you move to the top here also the result is pretty smooth. It's better than the previous example and also all these gaps are now merged. So I'll use this rebuild tool here. Now if you want to increase or decrease the density of the triangular facets you can increase or decrease it here but we don't want that so I'll just simply click OK and here we are so we have got this now if you want to further modify this model you can do that for example you can remove uh, most of these facets simply by simplifying this mesh also you can smooth some of these areas for example this microphone piece you can smooth this one or maybe this part of the drawing there are a lot of changes that you can do and you are only limited by your imagination but in this case i'll only make these changes and with that i'll select finish direct editing and we are done. Now you can once again export this model for 3D printing or maybe if you just want to export it as an STL then you can just go to export and select export mesh body or directly you can send it to your slicer software. So that's how you can modify these 3D solids in Fusion 360.